Morning guys. So, I have an Oser iDigits hand that I don't use very often, but occasionally I do need to use it. Well, recently when I was charging my batteries, I had the LiPo packs go puffy. And when this happens, the cells become compromised and really you shouldn't be you shouldn't use them anymore because they can catch fire. So the battery packs are only good, they're only warranted for a year, I found out. So rather than sending them back and incurring a cost, I decided to go to my local hobby shop and get a lipo pack that has the same type of cell and replace them for essentially $20. So what you do is you take your you take your regular E-Flight uh, LiPo, you cut the outer heat shrink off, and that leaves you with three individual cells. So then what you do from here, you're going to need to isolate the cells. You know, So you'll unsolder this one, unsolder that one, and that leaves you with just the terminals. And then, as you can see, then you'll just solder them onto the contacts that are in the battery packs themselves. So you just remove this, you know, being careful not to touch the contacts, you know, because they it is still it is still a lipo battery. You still don't want to you don't want to short them to discharge them. Doing it this way, you'll be able to replace the cells in your battery packs for much less and quicker than sending them in, RMAing them, getting new cells from Osir. So let's get started so we need to get the cell itself out of the housing um, I was really lucky that when this happened it popped the little backs off of it so you know I didn't have to cut open the housing be really careful that you don't actually cut the cell I haven't done one of these yet so it's oh there we go okay so so yep they're just held in place with double-sided sticky tape so, what we'll do is we'll, we'll remove the insulating tape that protects the wiring from getting shorted. So just like that, and that leaves us with two terminals. Just like what we have on this new cell. Now this yellow stuff is called Kapton tape. Use it to, to isolate things. Now what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to mark positive and negative on these cells so I don't get them mixed up. Positive, negative, negative, positive. So since these are set up in series, that means that this one is going to be a negative. Or no, this one's going to be positive. And this one's going to be negative. The way that works is you go positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And that'll take your 3.7 volts per cell, and that'll boost it up to 11.1. .1. So, let's take our soldering iron. Wait for it to come up to temperature. Hopefully somebody will be able to use this technique to be able to repair their hands, rather than having to send the battery packs back to Osir. Or, actually, I guess, whatever you end up doing. I don't, I don't really know if you have to send them back, or if you... Uh, or if you just have to buy new ones. Then let's unsolder this cell from the pack. So these might actually be spot welded rather than soldered. They probably spot welded them together. So that leaves us with three individual cells. Just like that. Okay. So next, we just need to attach this circuit board onto the cells. And we'll just do that uh, just like you would 
We'll just solder that on just like you would anything else. Okay. So, we have these marked out positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. Okay, so, this one's negative, which is marked on both sides. So that's positive and negative. Okay, and negative and positive and positive and negative. Now, okay, when we look at all these cells, you'll see that each one is the same. So on the back where they have the date code, it's a negative, positive, negative, positive, okay? And then on the front, just make sure all the polarities are all the same. Yep, okay. So, um, since they already have solder on the one side, I'm going to use that as, as a starting point. Make sure you get a nice solder joint there. You don't want, you don't want to uh, have a cold joint. Okay, so on this one, we're going to need to burn through that, uh, that layer like we did on the last one. Okay, so we're through that. So let's put just a little bit of a little bit more fresh solder on that. And, and let's solder that wire on there. There we go. And then as you can see, the uh, the LED is lit up telling us that we got it in the, that we got it right. So, let's, let's take some of this thin tape, and I'll go back and do this to the other one too. Um, so, actually isolate the individual terminals. I mean, the Kapton tape itself ought to be good enough. I was just thinking that it'd probably be better to, to isolate the terminals from each other. So we have our little masking tape right there. Because we're going to fold those terminals back onto that. So just like that. And then... Capped on tape from there. There's one, okay, and that one's all covered up and protected. And two, okay. Like I said, when when my cells, when my battery packs came apart, I was lucky because um, it took the two clamshells. And evidently mine weren't like super glued or glued a lot together. So now what we'll do is um, we'll just use just a couple dots of glue just to close the cell up. We'll just do just a couple dots, just in the corners, in case I need to open it back up. Okay. 
And there you go. Good as new. Um, I hope this helps somebody out there that that has no sir hand that the batteries died. Um, and guys, have a great day. Thanks for watching.